Crews at the plant have been struggling to deal with contaminated water elsewhere on site. They're trying to stop hundreds of tons of tainted groundwater from flowing directly into the ocean every day. They say radioactive strontium and cesium may have been leaking into the ocean since May 2011. TEPCO officials say 30 trillion becquerels of the radioactive materials may have flowed down to the shore in that time. That's well beyond the in-house annual emission limit of 220 billion becquerels. Cesium and strontium are easily absorbed into soil, so the officials say it's hard to determine the exact amount that got out. Radioactive water has been building up every day at the plant since the accident. It's a growing problem. The short-term solution is storage. There is no long-term solution. NHK World's Noriko Okada walks us through the issue. Walkers pour 100 tons of cooling water every day into the three reactors where the meltdown took place. The water comes into direct contact with molten fuel and becomes highly contaminated. Company officials initially thought they would be able to reuse the contaminated water to cool the reactors. But then they discovered groundwater was seeping into the reactor buildings. They had to adapt their plan to address the 400 tons of contaminated water being pumped out every day. The company installed devices that were supposed to filter out the majority of the radioactive substances from the water. But so far, cesium is the only substance they've been able to remove. The stored water remains highly contaminated with other materials. Company officials say they are now storing some 340,000 tons of contaminated water in 1,000 tanks. They plan to add more tanks to increase capacity to 700,000 tons. But the tanks have been hastily built. Experts have often pointed out how vulnerable they are to damage. And this isn't the first time leaks have been found. Company officials have reported another grim figure. 30 trillion becquerels of radionuclide substances have been discharged into the ocean since May 2011. They say 950 trillion becquerels of cesium had leaked into the ocean before that date. That means about one quadrillion becquerels of radionuclide have been discharged into the Pacific. One expert says stopping the flow of contaminated water isn't enough. He is calling for more research into its effect. Radioactive substances are accumulating in the seabed and are being consumed by fish. High levels of radiation have been detected in some of the fish. We don't know the mechanism or how it's happening. This is something we haven't fully investigated. Kanda says information about the contamination must be fully disclosed. He says that's the only way to allay growing fear and distrust in Japan and around the world. Noriko Okada, NHK World.
Well, breaking right now, radiation levels inside a Fukushima nuclear power plant damaged by that tsunami nearly six years ago is now at their highest point since that disaster. And experts believe melted fuel is leaking inside the plant almost daily, causing radiation levels high enough to kill a human being with just brief exposure. The latest readings now posing a serious challenge as officials prepare to dismantle the facility. Adam Housing, who covered that triple meltdown in Fukushima back in 2011, is following the story and he joins us live with more. Adam? Yeah, Jenna, hard to believe it's been nearly six years. And when we initially covered that, it was that great video that came in that really showed the destruction that Japan had to endure from the earthquake and the tsunami. But no one knew at the time the growing threat, which today continues to only get worse. That was the tsunami that took out the cooling system at Fukushima that basically caused the meltdown of three reactors that continues to this day. In fact, we're told the most recent numbers due to those meltdowns that nearly uh, 300 tons of radioactive water is dumped into the Pacific Ocean each and every day. The radiation levels, in fact, inside are now the highest level since 2011. Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, which is in charge of this area, reports that the radi radiation level has reached 530 sieverts per hour. The, to give you an example, it used to be 73 per hour. For people that don't know this stuff, let's put it into very simple terms. Four sieverts can kill a handful of people. Right now, 530 per hour are being detected there. According to scientists, that's unimaginable radiation levels. A robot was sent in. It only lasted an hour before radiation took it out, basically ruined it. It found a six-foot gaping hole inside that somehow has to be patched. Now, due to this high level of radiation, the company assures the public everything will be fine, but we've heard this information from Jap Japan before. There's been criticism even back six years ago when this first happened that Japan wasn't giving all the information out. Uh, we do know this. They say it will take at least $300 billion and four decades to finally fix this area. It's the worst since the 1986 Chernobyl disaster. Uh, again, also, we, as we get more numbers coming in, Jenna, uh, to keep this in mind as well, they say that right now there's still radiation being detected off the coast of California and Oregon. Now, it's very small, but the worry is with 300 tons of radioactive water going in every day to the Pacific, what is that doing to the Pacific Ocean, Jenna? Well, this is a, it's a crazy story, Adam. And I remember all your reporting. It was, you did such a great job there. You posted all the photos that you took and the time that you spent in Japan. Right. From your experience there on the ground and the precautions that you had to take simply as a journalist, I mean, what do you, what do you think about this? Well, it, you know, we were only got within 90 miles because we had protective gear, but, you know, we didn't know what we were dealing with. And that was one of the biggest complaints. Even the U.S. military was complaining to the Japanese government at the time. They weren't getting the true numbers. And what some people are saying is, has it been this bad from the beginning? And how are you going to fix this six-foot hole? I mean, a robot only lasted an hour or so because the radiation level is so high. Uh, and we really don't all know, all know also what this radioactive water is doing to the Pacific, Jenna. I think a lot of people are very concerned about that. They continue to monitor, monitor fish off of Japan. There's still areas not allowed to fish in, but that water, as we know, moves towards the west coast sure. of the U.S. I haven't thought about it for several years, and now certainly we are. We're going to have yeah. to follow up on this. Adam, thank you.